So welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to be talking about an overview of immigration updates from uh, both England and from the US. We're joined by Raul from Hudson McKenzie and also Mark Topolewski from Ellis Porter. Um, I myself am um, with Ellis Porter, our UK office. So uh, we're going to go over a brief overview of all the changes. We're going to touch on the temporary work permits, permanent residency. We're also going to go into some compliance issues and then we're going to share some best practices with everyone as well. So Rahul, I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourself and Hudson McKenzie um, and then Mark, we can go over Ellis Porsche as well. Hello everyone, um, my name is Rahul Batra, I'm managing partner at Hudson McKenzie. We are a global immigration firm um, and we focus mainly on UK immigration inbound work and we also coordinate work permit applications across the globe. Um, and Mark, uh, yeah, so I'm the managing attorney of Ellis Porter. Ellis Porter is a uh, U.S. immigration law firm focused exclusively on uh, practicing U.S. immigration. Uh, we have uh, offices, two offices in, in Metro Detroit, Michigan, in the United States, as well as one office in London, uh, U.K. Uh, our vendor heads up our uh, Ellis Porter U.K. office, uh, but our office in the U.K. is focused on only uh, providing U.S. immigration services uh, to individuals in the UK. We do not provide UK immigration services, but uh, we have about um, uh, 60 immigration professionals focused exclusively on immigration, uh, US immigration, uh, and pretty much have uh, experts in, in every area of, uh, of US immigration law. Right. So let's jump into some of the um, From both the US and UK side, we've seen travel bans coming up, uh, we've seen border restrictions. Um, there's also been, in certain circumstances, automatic extensions and embassy and consular closures. So in terms of the US side, uh, seeing travel bans, most people have probably heard about them in the news. Um, certainly travel from China and Iran were two of the earliest travel bans coming into the US. That was extended to the 26 countries that make up the Schengen area. Um, and then very shortly after that, the UK and Ireland were also included in that travel ban coming into the US. There are exceptions available. Um, so individuals that are US citizens are exempt, uh, US lawful permanent residents are exempt, spouses of US citizens and lawful permanent residents are also exempt. There are uh, certain other exceptions as well if you're in the military or you have an, uh, a need in national interest. Um, they are readily available on the USCIS website and the Department of State website as well, um, if, if you did want to go in to look through those. Um, individuals who have traveled to any one of those countries in the past 14 days will not be allowed to enter, but if you fall into one of those exceptions and you're traveling into the US, uh, you would be directed to one of 11 airports where you'd go undergo a health screening um, prior to being actually admitted into the US itself. Um, Rahul, are there any uh, travel restrictions coming into the UK? Well, the UK hasn't imposed any travel bans, um, but migrants are asked to self-isolate themselves if they come from infected countries, for example, Italy and Spain. So there's a cautious approach there, definitely, but um, there's no travel ban per se happening right now. Okay, great. Um, and Mark, let's quickly touch on some of the border restrictions. Um, obviously, the U.S. shares border with Canada to the north and Mexico to the south. Are there any border restrictions that we should know about? Uh, there are, and the U.S. approached it kind of a, an inter interesting way as far as how they define these border restrictions. So, uh, basically, the, the restrictions right now ban non-essential travel between the United States and Canada and between the United States and Mexico. And this was a joint agreement between the three countries. But... Uh, the, the restriction essentially only defines what travel is non-essential. It does not uh, clarify what travel is essential. But as far as non-essential, uh, it defines as, as uh, anything for tourism uh, or any other recreational travel across the border, uh, even something visiting family. Uh, all of those are considered non-essential and, and are not being allowed uh, at the moment. However, essential travel continues to be permitted and that would be anybody who's crossing the border uh, to provide medical care. Uh, you know, we sit here on the border of uh, the U.S. And, and Canada and there are a, a, a large number of Canadian uh, nurses uh, who live in Canada and commute to work in, in Detroit 
uh, every day, and, and those individuals are continue are, are able to continue to come to their jobs, uh, work in the United States. Anybody else who has a, a work visa, which is would be the TN uh, visa under NAFTA, is again also allowed to come into the United States uh, to their jobs if their jobs are uh, their jobs are essential. And uh, you know all the trade traffic that normally goes across uh, these borders. Uh, are also allowed to continue. So uh, we've even seen them, they are allowing uh, the, the processing of TN visas uh, at the border, even while this restriction is in place, uh, if you are applying to uh, applying for or applying for the first time or applying to renew uh, a, a TN work visa for an essential job in the United States. But I guess it really is key prior to leaving the US to process any TNs, or trying to enter, you really should consider whether your position would be considered essential because um, you may run into some issues at the border otherwise. Absolutely. And um, Raul, how's the uh, border restrictions in the UK? Well, again, the UK hasn't closed its borders, uh, but the limited flights uh, are operating right now as other countries have introduced no foreigner policy. So um, non-essential travel obviously is not happening as you know you can't leave your homes. but um, the borders are still open and you, you must have recently read about 70,000 people coming from Europe to do uh, fruit picking in the UK so it's all happening but obviously under very, very tight scrutiny right um, so let, let's move into extensions um, so we know that there are certain extensions available Rahul I'm going to pass it over to you um, to discuss how are the extensions looking in the UK? Well, the UK has taken a stand that they would automatically grant extensions to people until 31st of May 2020 um, with a view to extend if, if need be, depending on when the lockdown gets over. So at the moment, anybody who's in the UK need not worry You know, if their visa expires. They're not termed as a long-term stay or an overstay in the country and future applications will not be scrutinized on this basis. Excellent. And Mark, how is the U.S. approaching extensions? Well, the, the U.S. did not grant that leniency, and I think that's a very, um, that was a very strategically important thing for the, the government in the U.K. to do, but it's not something that was done here in the United States. So uh, individuals who are here in the United States uh, on a work visa still must extend their status uh, if their status is expiring during the, the, uh, the pandemic period. And there's no relaxation of those uh, those expiration deadlines. So, uh, if you're here on a work visa, even on a, a, a tourist visa, you need to take steps to uh, extend that status. Otherwise, you would be considered out of status. Um, now, you know where, and and also where a lot of individuals normally might not actually file an extension with the U.S. Immigration Service uh, in the United States, they might normally travel uh, to a consulate and simply renew their visa. And, and therefore extend their status upon re-entry to the United States using that new visa. But now with all the consulates and, and embassies around the world closed for visa services, uh, that's very much not an option for most people. So uh, if for individuals in the US, they have to take steps to extend uh, their, their status, uh, otherwise they risk being out of status. For individuals who are uh, here uh, under the visa uh, waiver program, um, which allows individuals of certain countries to come into the United States for up to 90 days without a visa. Um, if they are unable to leave and, and depart, uh, there is a, a process called satisfactory, satisfactory departure uh, where they can go to an airport and let a, a government official know uh, that they're not able to leave, they can't get a flight home, it's not safe to travel home, and they will extend that status. But for everybody else, those extensions uh, have to be filed uh, with the USCIS in the United States. Uh, but keep in mind that once that extension is filed, uh, for most uh, temporary temporary work visa statuses, uh, your status will be extended for a period of up to 240 days, even beyond your expiration date while that extension is pending. So uh, it remains very important to file extensions uh, for uh, your work visa status in the United States right now. Right. And I think you gave a nice segue into um, talking about embassies and consulates. So we know as of late March, I think it was March 20th, the Department of State temporarily suspended all routine non-immigrant and immigrant uh, visa services at all US embassies and consulates around the world. Um, you can get exceptions for emergency services, but 
it's yet to be seen whether that would fall into the employment world. Uh, it's very unlikely that uh, something from an employment perspective would be deemed an emergency, um, but you can always make that request. Um, but like you said, Mark, I think it's really important that this doesn't prohibit anyone filing uh, cases with USCIS, and it could be a good opportunity to put the groundwork in now if you're looking to hire individuals or maybe um, transfer individuals from your UK um, or other European offices to the US, you could file with USCIS and then wait for the US embassies and consulates to reopen to be able to go and apply for that visa. Um, Rahul, over to you. In terms of embassies and consulates, how's uh, the UK doing? Are they, uh, do they still have the consulates open? Well, the UK has taken a similar stand as other countries and all embassies and consulates are closed, temporarily closed across the world. Likewise, all foreign embassies and consulates in the UK are closed too. Um, but I'm seeing a trend right now of companies still applying for sponsor licensing, still issuing COSs for employees in the hope that when the restrictions are lifted, people will be able to travel. So immigration work is still going on. You know, People are still filing for COS applications, but it's just a matter of time when the borders open and people can start traveling again. Right. So it's a similar approach and I, I presume then from your perspective as well for any employers that may be looking to forecast in the future and may have ongoing projects into 2021 it still may be a good idea to use this time now to continue filing where possible. 